I feel privileged to be able to share with you guys. Um, I want to <clears throat> I want to harken back to my life as a kid a little bit and bring out some things. Um, I was, uh, and, and many of you know this part, but, but I lived in an orphanage and um, it was a United Methodist orphanage <clears throat> and they had um, different dorms for different aged uh, children. But they also, right in the big middle of it on a hill, they had a, a chapel where we all went to church every Sunday morning and uh, Sunday evening. And um, um, <clears throat> the room, you know, you look around the room, the church room uh, with the, the, the pews and everything, and, and there's all these kids that are orphans. And, um, um, you know, in a sense, we could look around and we could see a room full of rejects. Um, we were just kids. We didn't, we didn't understand everything that was going on. <clears throat> but there just wasn't a lot of beauty or whatever going on in that place. And, uh, but in that, in that church was some really beautiful windows, incredibly beautiful windows. They were stained glass windows. <clears throat> and um, they they always just captured me how how beautiful that they looked and uh, some of my favorites were uh, Jesus standing at the door and knocking um, Jesus holding a little lamb uh, Jesus on the cross and then Jesus in the garden and you know I mean, I had no, I wasn't, I wasn't, to my knowledge, I wasn't born again at that time. But I was, I was just fascinated with Jesus, the way he looked. And, um, but these, these stained glass windows, they had, they had different colors. Uh, and I would just stare and stare at them. And the sun illuminated the sun. The S-U-N illuminated the S-O-N. And it just filled that, that chapel just from all angles and all these colors and everything. And, and to me, it was just a wonderful thing. And, um, but um, just recently, I don't know, days ago, that all is coming back to my remembrance uh, sitting in that pew as a little boy and and looking around at those glass windows and looking around at all these these orphans that were together and and the, those windows um, this was not then but but a few days ago I thought now what what are those windows made of what are they made of they're made of broken fragments of glass broken fragments different colors different shapes um, taken from different objects obviously because they were uh, so many so many incredible colors that were coming out from that and so they were basically these beautiful pictures were um, a bunch of broken fragments. A bunch of broken fragments. And this is what I was thinking about just a few days ago. I mean, first came the recollection of those pictures of Jesus, that stained glass. And then the realization there's just a bunch of broken fragments that have been brought together, <clears throat> stuck together, if you will, kind of like the orphans that were there too, you know, different places, different colors, broken homes and stuff like that. 
and and as I began to meditate, and I and I believe the Holy Spirit was leading this. In fact, I jotted this down at the time, <clears throat> speaking to those stained glass windows. Somebody knew how to take broken pieces and join them together in such a way that you would no longer see the broken pieces but Jesus. You would, I mean, I'm sure that when we all first came into that, that church building and we saw the bright colors and, and the illumination of Jesus by the sun, if you will, the S-U-N, we didn't really understand what it was made of. But um, I wrote down also, you, you wouldn't see a whole bunch of broken pieces, but just one beautiful picture. And in those pictures, it would be through them, light shined so brilliantly in an orphanage, if you will, in a dark orphanage. So brilliantly. And to me, heart-touching, heart you know, heart-touching because of, of that. And, um, but at the same time, <laughs> I also remember, um, depending on where you were sitting, um, you could be sitting in a place where that light was shining down on the kids that were in that area. And the sun's hitting it just right, and their faces were all illuminated and bright. They didn't, they didn't look like orphans. They didn't look like reject rejects or lost ones or whatever and uh, but then there were other portions where there the windows were not so facing that uh, it would show on the on the kids so it was kind of dark in that that place <clears throat> and uh, and I I when I was thinking of it a few days ago, I wrote down, you wouldn't see a whole bunch of broken pieces. You wouldn't see a whole bunch of broken pieces. Just one beautiful picture through which light shined brilliantly onto those little faces. <laughs> mm. Mm. they didn't appear as rejects. And so um, a, a few days ago, and really also in Ireland, I saw uh, a, another picture. And a few days, that two days ago, I saw that stained glass has two different ways of looking at our lives either here on earth or as we are in the world of done, in the world where Jesus is the fulfillment for everything, for everything. And when you look at that stained glass, if you were up close maybe, who knows, if it was this close the way I'm sitting here um, and and the window was there, you could see probably all the broken pieces. Um, um, and maybe that would be what you focus on, all the broken pieces. Or you just take a few steps back from, from everything and you look and you see Jesus. You see a really beautiful picture of Jesus. Um, so uh, I wrote, we are either caught up with all the broken pieces, which a lot of Christians are really just caught up with all the broken pieces. And I understand that. I mean, 
I still have stuff that I, you know, obviously you probably could tell a little bit from the use of the orphanage, but it, but it doesn't matter. I mean, even if I, even if I call this all, all the orphans rejects, and even if we were, in him we're not. In him we're something beautiful because he is beautiful, not because we are. But we are in the one that is that is illuminated by the Holy Spirit, and so um, we're either caught up with our broken pieces, or we see the beauty of Him. We see, we see, we see, we finally see, and. Um, and we realize that God is the one who makes the stained glass windows. And I, I thought, what an amazing name, stained glass. And yet, you look at it and you see Jesus, and you see the whole picture with every little broken piece. It's not stained. There are no stains left. Jesus bore it all. And to me, that's just powerful. Um, so we, we either see the beauty of, of him or um, we see those, those broken places in us or we see that beauty through the scriptures, which is, which is like the sun, in a sense, shining, shining through to, to illuminate Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse um, 9, starting with verse 9. For in Him we dwell. In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Already the flesh is cut away. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, not looking at a mirror that reflects us back, but looking at a stained glass that shines him. Um, seeing that it is reflecting eternal reality. Eternal reality. Not, not help for the moment reality. But help for all eternity reality in whom you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So all of, all of this is put off and it's already dealt with and it's already settled. And, and if we don't see that, and many of us don't, or many, many don't. And I, you know, that's why we're in the ministry, all of us, is to make all men see what is the hope of their calling in him. Um, it, then uh, it goes on to say, um, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him, buried risen through the faith of the operation of God. That's done. That's done. Remember, this is, this is talking about us being complete in Him. Who hath raised Him from the dead, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, 
Okay, so this is this next verse. This is verse 13. We're just reading right down is contrasting one understanding of the the picture of the of the stained glass one understanding is seeing ourselves as broken pieces or seeing jesus and it's all all is all hidden in him so he says you also circumcised with the ma uh, circumcision made without hands. This, this is what Jesus says. Then underneath it, it says, verse 13, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He's not telling you to circumcise yourself or to, to get rid of your flesh. He did that. He's telling you to, to see it done to see the the bright shining radiant illumination that is Jesus and uh, and hath quickened to you together with him having forgiven you all trespasses wow so the, the, the death has already happened. He's not going to die again every time you sin. So he's trying to quicken us, <laughs> make us alive. That was, that was one of the things I remember when I was in the orphanage. And I walk into that church building, and instead of it being dreary, instead of it being lonely, instead of it being uh, dark or... or you know, bad things going on. There were, we were surrounded with Jesus glowing <laughs> through those stained glass windows. It was, it was like, it was alive. It was like it was alive there in that place. And I would just stare and stare. I couldn't get my eyes off. I would just, if for no other reason, how bright, how beautiful it looked compared to the dreariness of life apart from that. And so, um, verse 10 again, and you are complete in him. You are complete in him, in whom you are circumcised with the circumcision, in whom you are buried with him baptism in the death, uh, in whom you are raised from the dead, um, and, the, and the, uh, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, he quickened together with him, having forgiven all trespasses. So, so, so come on, orphans. <laughs> come on, orphans. Wake up. Come on, orphans, look around. Let's blend into him. Let's be found in him, not having our own righteousness and okay with it, knowing that he will increase. And that increase will mean that we will de decrease. I, uh, I said, look at the stained glass, but you will see no stain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Having forgiven you all trespasses, no stain. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. We are already in the world of done. We are already in the one who's fulf the fulfillment of everything the Father wanted. Hmm. We're surrounded with Jesus. That's the way I feel. I felt in the 
in the orphanage in the chapel surrounded with Jesus. You come through the front door and right on the right side, there he is knocking. And come. It didn't matter where you sat, you know, you could see at least three of the four pictures. We are surrounded with Christ because it's in him that we live and move and have our being so that we are no longer of this earth. We are no longer, we are of another realm realm, a realm of God established in the heart of God from the, before the foundation of the world. So, awake ye orphans and look around and see Jesus instead of the fragments. Amen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pray. I love you guys. Thank you again. Thank you for loving Jesus. Thank you for your prayers. I hear, I, I, I listen when I, I get to come in here and hear you praying and hear your hearts. And I mean, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And I love being with y'all. Father, thank you that we are not just broken fragments we are broken fragments that were taken into your son and made whole by him who is the fullness that filleth all in all the fragments are no longer seen as as fragments they are seen as Christ in us and we long for and reach out with our hearts, the hands of our hearts, like, like heart man, Father. And we reach out to your Son. And we say, shine, shine, shine. Illuminate our minds, our spirit, our soul, our body into the new creation. The new creation. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.